other specified mm-hmm. parts of ODF. Uh, is that still the case? Um, so um, I would first agree on on the first uh, on what you said first. It's true that it's definitely you know a bait to have people say, well, you know, we don't even have to move to LibreOffice, for instance. Um, we just can stay with Microsoft Office because, after all, we can be using ODF. Um, the second part is I'm not so sure about the uh, binary blob thing um, inside ODF. I, I I don't think so, honestly. I think that might have been the case in the past, but right now it doesn't seem so. Um, you know, if if the reason was to have a binary blob inserted inside uh, ODF documents, uh, in the case they were uh, mathematical formulas, then it would have been with respect to one specific case where, uh, you know, the open formula inclusion uh, inside ODF was simply not ready. Um, which doesn't make it a nice solution, but um, that would explain that. I don't think that Microsoft is um, at this stage uh, delivering or dispa- generating ODF documents with binary blobs in it. Um, if that's the case, uh, then it is very unfortunate, and we should be doing something about that. Uh, you know, when you're not Microsoft, it's a bit hard, but um, uh, you know, we can still try. But I can still try to look for that. I, uh, to be honest, I, I don't think that's the case anymore. Yeah, well, there has been pretty amazing science, obviously, from Sun. Once the company was acquired, many people got laid off and so on and so forth. Uh, from the IBM side, uh, Bob Sutter seems to be very, how should I put it, obsessed now with all, all kinds of iDevices and all sorts of cloud and nonsense like that, so even though he's supposed to be like head of Linux and open source, and I know I'm ranting about it, but I do think I have the right to because he's supposed to be the person fronting for open source and IBM and, and he used to at least do things about ODF, so he hasn't been saying anything about uh, maybe once in a while when, you know, there is the acquisition of the project from um, from Oracle now, not exactly acquisition, but really the passage of the assets and uh, and allocation to the uh, Apache project, and he might mention something about it, so he's pretty much silent about it. The other person who speaks about it is Rob Weir, and when he was still very active talking about ODF and not just a specification and trying to pass it as a specification, uh, he wrote something about Microsoft uh, essentially doing what you might call MS ODF, uh, where they always say, oh, MS ODF, I mean something which would only work within Microsoft Office because they create files that are expanded or uh, augmented by Microsoft only or Microsoft only interpreted um, components, additions, blobs, or something to do with the formulas in particular. That was around 2008 or 9, mm-hmm. um, and Microsoft was starting to gain more control in the TC in the, uh, in the committee. Uh, whereas I don't really know where it's how many people from Oracle and from IBM are still in it, but I haven't been keeping track, to be honest. I don't think anybody has been keeping very good track of, of things since the, uh, around 2009. Yeah. Uh, so the thing I will say about Rob Weir, he mentioned, last, last thing I know, is the, it was a very kind of half-hearted implementation of, um, of ODF for Microsoft, at least at the time. And having said that, they also moved into the so-called cloud more and more. I know what some of our customers in general are moving to Google Docs, which doesn't exactly support ODF properly. It's a bit like it's, you know, I, I think I would quote, um, what's his name? Uh, um, one of well, the, the Samba lawyer at the time, uh, uh, Carlo, Carlo, Carlo Piana. He said oh, that, uh, yeah, he said that, it, he said that Google Docs take his spreadsheet and turns it into shit or something like that. I think these were his words, basically, because he wasn't able to get very good compatibility with the online things, which are very good with working within themselves, even with, you know, internal upgrades and stuff, you can be assured it works fine, but as soon as you export and import things, it doesn't quite work so well. So what I'm trying to ask here is, what to what extent is ODF still universal format? Has it been extended, or has it been kind of... Uh, has it been proprietarized or extended in the same way that Microsoft, by the way, used to do with Office back in the older days with the word perfect when they were extending things in a proprietary fashion to break the competitor's product so, so they didn't do it again? Yeah, so so huh. uh, I think there's a lot of background here to, to perhaps provide, but let me just start with uh, two very simple things. I have a good news on this. No ODF has not been extended or, you know, cluster fucked 
sorry, but for lack of a better word, uh, in, in, in any way. Uh, ODF is still very much an open standard, and it is one, uh, you know, it is one and the same. I know it's, it's a very you know, definitive sounding answer, but no, no, there's, there's, there's no game, there are no games being played uh, on ODF these days, and, uh, uh, and I think, you know, that's the good news. The bad news starts exactly with this. Uh, there are no games played on ODF these days. Which means that um, what happened, um, and you asked the question uh, at some point, is that what happened when Oracle bought um, some microsystems is that you had an, OD, an Oasis ODF TC that, you know, I don't have the roster, of course, but you pretty much had, what, uh, two or three people from some microsystems uh, working there. Um, among them, the inventors of the open document format. Uh, I'll give you that. And then you had IBM. Uh, and IBM was about like what? Yeah, you do between two to three, uh, engineers as well, four. Uh, you know, apologize if I don't get the, uh, the, the, all the, the facts right there, but you know, just to give you an order of magnitude. And then what you had, uh, was, um, Oracle. Oracle, but in it by itself, uh, before the acquisition of uh, Sun Microsystems, had its own engineers there at the community. And then you have, uh, you had, you know, uh, Suzy at Novell Suzy. Uh, you even had uh, Adobe. Uh, you, you know, you had all sorts of people. So what happened when Oracle bought Sun is that this has um, degenerated into a complete waste and a grave danger for ODF. Because uh, Oracle pulled the plug on openoffice.org, and specifically that means uh, they pulled the plug on the uh, Hamburg business unit. Now, you know, and, and this is one of the core reasons why the LibreOffice project was started, by the way, is that people fail to understand the fundamental, um, you know, the fundamental starting point of LibreOffice is precisely Oracle uh, turning the uh, Hamburg office, the, the star, the former star division, the guys who had created uh, Star Office, they turned that into their corporate parlance uh, in a in a business unit. Now, Oracle is in the fundamental business. Of acquiring other corporations, and that's fine by me. That's that's that's. There's no moral judgment here. All I'm saying is, that's what they do, and you know what? They're actually very successful in doing this. And the reason they're successful is that they apply a well-tested merger and acquisition process that extends prior to the actual date of acquisition, and that extends all the way to about. 18 to 24 months after the actual acquisition of the company. And one of the signs that you have a low, a serious set of low hanging fruits that are going to be cut in the next 18 months after the actual official acquisition of the company is that you basically turn uh, divisions or specific offices or whatever into Oracle business units. That's what it means. You know, what it means is uh, we're basically watching you. And if you don't do anything by about 12 to 18 months, we are going to fire your ass. And the business unit will be dead. So once you know this, and once you have that information that Hamburg had become a business unit, you knew that Sun had been historically uh, unable to generate a profitable business model specifically for this office, for open office uh, slash star office at Sun. Now, you had the equation and you even had the timeline to basically say, that's it. That's it. These guys are toasted whether they want it or not. They have to basically come up with all sorts of salespeople. They don't know how to hire and that is just going to take several months. So by the time they even get around that thing, it will be too late. So anyway, to come back to uh, 
what happened to uh, ODF in the process. Well, you know, as much, you know, Oracle was basically shutting down all the open source processes inside OpenOffice.